Our community needs to feel like the police department is prepared to be out there and take care of the community. In order for an officer to engage community, they've got to feel healthy. They've got to come to work wanting to do the job. We need to invest in them at all levels, from education, onboarding, cultural, their physical well-being, their emotional well-being. If we're safe and well, we're more capable of doing our job and keeping other people safe. As the duties and responsibilities of police officers has expanded over the years, more and more responsibility is put on police. It's important to address that additional pressure, those additional responsibilities with the health and wellness program. Police officers take on a pretty heavy workload, not only emotionally, but tactically and physically as well. And that can build a lot of stress on officers while they're at work, but, but also when they leave work. Um, a lot of times, it doesn't just leave you. You're, you're kind of a police officer 24 hours a day. Police officers are at higher risk for depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder. They're at higher risk for cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks, strokes, um, diabetes, and high blood pressure. And as much as they give to our communities and to their department by putting their lives on the line, a happy and healthy officer is obviously going to perform well and help our community better. Components of a wellness program really should include ways that they can recharge their body because sleep is a big issue. The physical fitness aspect of it, nutrition is another piece. Peer support training. If they have an officer who's afraid to go to mental health, who may have that stigma, those peer support officers can be the liaison to get them to the help that they need. Resources are put out at roll call. If a supervisor notices that uh, an officer may be having trouble, they may pull them aside and talk to them you know, offline and let them know what resources are available to them. San Antonio has a very unique police department because they have three embedded psychologists that only see police officers and their families. We have a program that was developed by one of our psychologists here called Performance and Recovery Optimization. Performance and Recovery Optimization Pro. It's a comprehensive wellness program for police officers and it's all related throughout their entire career life cycle. The modules of the training include how to respond optimally, what is the survival stress response. We also talk about combat breathing and muscle control during stressful situations. We're just gonna show you what the effects are of stress. We talk about performance self-talk how they talk to themselves uh, during a critical incident or during their jobs, but also their self-talk at home. So these techniques that you use here, okay, in performance, critical incident stress, you can use throughout your entire life. It allows us to slow down and adequately or properly assess the situation and apply the correct response to it and resolve the problem as easily, as safely as possible to everyone involved. When we're in a stressful situation, we may make erratic decisions or unreasonable decisions that we wouldn't make otherwise. So if I can recognize that I'm stressed and start to get, you know, some techniques to calm that down, now I'm able to handle that call more effectively. And that's going to keep the people that we're serving protected and it's going to keep us safe. Everybody's got an optimal performance zone. Can these skills enhance that, that zone for them and even expand that zone for them? We present it as a tactics technique. So if it's a natural tactics technique, they seem to be more receptive. Word choice is an extremely important part of instructing police officers. What are some of the things that you guys do to monitor your stress level? Coming up with the acronym PRO was actually really effective because it wasn't de-escalate, calm down. What makes PRO unique is that Officers build it, they write it, and they teach it. So that the message is always going to be there, uh, regardless of even if you have a mental health professional there or not. Our approach is, hey, we've got this tool. Once they understand that we're doing this to assist them and to make their lives better and their home lives better, we get nothing but openness. They really want to apply that to their lives. And who wouldn't to make their lives happier? The critiques that we've received have been 100% positive. This type of program helps our officers perform their jobs, and in doing that, it builds the reputation of our police department. Switch passenger driver. Go ahead and stage at the gas pumps. Good job, guys. If we are able to answer these calls more effectively, the community is going to respect us more. They're going to respect our authority. They're going to respect our decision-making capabilities. This type of program should be an integral part of what any police department does. The resources that we've dedicated to it, the hours that we've put to it, have really paid off. When you have an officer who's functioning well, psychologically, physically, they provide a better service. 
Our goal here in Doral was to have a well-run, healthy organization where people come to work and they feel good about their job, they feel secure. We care about them as individuals because we have a tough job. We serve a community with many needs. We try to do a holistic approach to wellness. Not only do we insist on the health, nutrition, physical fitness, but we believe that financial wellness is also an important part of the overall health and wellness of the officer. Most police officers live paycheck to paycheck. Financial problems can certainly hang over your head and affect your performance at work. It leads to all kinds of, of stresses. You see those officers who have to work the off-duty jobs to make ends meet. They're tired, they're exhausted, but they need to make the money. In order to make sure you're safe and to maintain your officer safety, you have to be able to concentrate on what you're doing. And you don't want in the back of your head wondering, what's going to happen in 10 years? Is my retirement going to be enough? Uh, is Social Security going to be there? So obviously, if you have none of these worries over your head, you can be more alert to protect the community. People in public service, especially police officers and firemen, have an opportunity to start the second chapter of their life a lot earlier than people in the private sector, usually in their early 50s. So they have a lot to look forward to, and they need to plan for a lot longer. It's a calling. So you've chosen this as a career, so you're looking at 20, 30 years. And at the end of that time, you want to be financially stable. The real key is education. To get enough information so they understand their retirement system, they understand their deferred comp, they understand possible other type of investments. And the earlier they start, the better chance they're going to have of a great financial plan when they get ready to leave the system. We have individual financial institutions always coming into the station to provide information. So what we did is we held a financial wellness seminar where we've brought all of the financial institutions that are available to us in one location where the officers can hear information, get educated, and then have the opportunity to individually seek advice or counseling from any of the individual financial institutions. Officers were involved in interacting with all the vendors and the firms and asking questions. Our goal is to take care of you for the next 25, 30 years, to give you a great career, but also give you the things to have a great career, which includes proper training and what we're doing today. Financial worries are always on your brain if you're a police officer, but I think it gives them comfort knowing they have access now and there's somebody they can talk to now about that, and they're not on their own. Coming to the experts and, and asking them specific questions and getting good answers that reassures them gives them more optimism and confidence going forward. We're helping officers buy their first homes. We encourage the deferred compensation program. These are all important things. Everybody needs to have financial uh, security and financial safety. When I look into the future, I, I feel confident that I'm going to be okay and peace of mind, that I'm still going to be able to provide for my loved ones. When you care about their health and their wealth, that means you care about their families as well. And that gives them that reassurance and confidence in the employer in return. Knowing the entity that I work for is bringing those venues and putting at my fingertips is certainly a, a huge comfort because I don't have to go after work. I can't tell you how much that is and to have so many in one spot. We have a great relationship with many corporations and many residents here in our city who are always willing to help. So it's very important to keep that contact with the public. The reward in the relationship is giving back to them in terms of our knowledge in order to achieve financial wellness for them after they've done a great job for the community. Every community has financial institutions, banks, insurance companies, financial planners who are more than willing to assist. They provide specific programs for our law enforcement officers, geared to our law enforcement officers, and it helps them as well as our officers. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. Health and wellness goes beyond the obvious physical fitness part of it. Financial wellness is peace of mind for your officers. For an officer to perform optimally, they've got to feel good, they've got to feel healthy. A well-rounded officer is a huge benefit for the community.